months ago and asked any random person on the street what viral load meant, first of all, they'd probably snicker at the word load, but they'd have no fucking clue what you're talking about. Now, I he- I've heard the word viral load from random fucking dummies, like, probably 200 times this week. And I'm not meaning, I don't mean you, I just mean, like, I heard it from fucking everyone. Viral load. I think, it, I think it's, uh, in layman's terms, it's for your hardly sick or really sick. Yeah. Like, according to Joe, Tony Hinchcliffe has a small viral load. Wasn't really sick. Same thing. And he said, there could be even less. There could be even less, and you still test positive. Hey, Matt, who was the first guy to get it? The Joe's buddy there, you know? Uh, Michael Chase. Michael Chase. Joe. No, not Michael Chase. Not Michael Mike- Yo. Michael Yo, that's it. Mike Yo, yeah. You all right there, Tamar? Yeah, I just got it up in the last of my notes to get out of this fucking... Don't so, in a fucking burning bar. <laughs> 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 he must have had a big viral load. Yeah, he must have had a big viral load. Yeah. He was also super run down, yada, yada, yada. Well, that's Joe. That's Dr. Joe's version of why he got fucking COVID so bad. Yeah. We don't know that for a well, fucking fact. I, it's science to me. Um, he, he did raise the point that it's further than lost. Uh, wanting to find out the origin of this virus. Simon, you all right? <laughs> all of a sudden, come on, are you doing something different? I'm getting like some weird feedback in my left ear. Dude, I'm, I, I'm going to come clean. I'm using a dongle. This is fucking it. Rubber tape and bubble gum holding me together here. What's wrong with the dongle? Okay. Simon, I just don't know. turn it down. <laughs> If you put it all the way in, it's, 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 I can't hear it. I mean, you got to pull it and fucking finesse it. Sorry, I don't want to stop. It's all good. Um, yeah, let's just read that one this time. I mean, no, 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 no. You can answer. We should find out the source of this fucking virus. Sorry, that repeat? We should find out the source of this virus. The lab in China. Definitively, like you said, they figured out what SARS was uh, from some chicken in six months. Yeah, I think. So let me ask you this, though, because I keep hearing this, too, and I'm always interested in people's responses. So what happens when we find out? Like, let's say we pin the tail on China, right? We say definitively the lab in Wuhan released this intention. Let's say we let's say we find out they released it intentionally. What happens then? Hopefully compensation. <laughs> See, like, that's what that's what I find funny is, like, we're at the point now where China, like, you, what are you going to do, sanction them? No, they'll have to release the Justin immediately. Oh, no. What are their names? Not Michael. The Michaels, yeah. No, it's more like if it turns out that it was preventable. That has to be known. If it's just the way the world works and we accept it, but we should know. And it should be... No uh, matter... Everyone wants to know. No matter what, it was preventable, Kamar, whether it was from a meat mar- or a open-air market where they're not taking good enough care of the food, or it was a lab thing, no matter what. It, well, then that matters. Yeah, I think... I agree. Listen, I, it all matters. I'm not saying it doesn't matter. What I'm saying is, when we find out, like... Because it's all, realistically, it's going to point to China. Right? Yeah. That's well, it works. points to China, but what happened in China? So what should happen, Matt, I think I see where you're going, is as soon as we definitely find out it's China, then there has to be something where they open up themselves to have some other third party. But that's what I'm saying. Or then like, we don't deal with their IO fucking whatever thing. Yeah, but that's my point, is everyone is so... There is not a country in the world, I believe, that isn't super dependent on China at this point. So you're... No more dollar stores. No more dollar stores, yeah. But we know, we know that the right thing anyway is for all of us, all of these countries, not to be so dependent on China. So maybe this is just the kick in the pants to everybody needed to... Look, for sure the poor countries aren't going to be able to do it. But places like Canada and the U.S., they will. They'll be able to... They're not going to wipe out... 
Like kind of like the toothpaste market or something. I don't know how that works. Matt, you know? We, we all agree that we should know how this happened. Definitively. Uh, yes, but we did say right. No, but just no I, I agree. I'm just thinking. I'm like, they found Osama bin Laden in a cave. They should be able to find out. Oh, no, okay. You, you agree with me? Your head's spinning. Last we week. Did, just one last thing, Mark. We did say right from the start that it would, when this was all over, when we got over this, blame would be put out there. But we're still not over it. So by that metric, we're still at Okay, they're on the clock. Yeah, um, on the last, clock. Yo. Lastly, lastly, they talked about the, uh, which is quite controversial, the uh, COVID relief bill for the states that I think Trump has vetoed. But the, the amount of money, there was $25 million to go to Pakistan to promote democracy and women's rights. What the fuck does that mean? It shows you how That's gross important. they are with these bills, though, that they can't push through... They can't even push through a single bill that just says, let's help our people. Without some help fucking, people. Is there, without is there, some dickhead being like, why don't we uh, make uh, poker illegal while we're at it? Or why don't we, you know what I mean? <coughs> no, but I'm reading from the budget. $25 million for Pakistan to promote democracy and women's rights. What does that mean? And then there was like a law to try and get people punished if they illegally stream. Well, yeah, that, that, was, that was another, they're, they're called pork barrels. But just like the, the vagueness of the goal, we're going to promote democracy. What does that mean? What does that mean? It, it, it feels like our politicians, like our two parties or three parties, they hate each other. But in order to give the people what they need, they'll do it. And then in the States, it's like they just hate each other too much to ever those two parties to ever come together. It's dirty. I want to point something out, too. It's What's really gross about it is all the shit that's done so far behind closed doors, like, what we, the people, or they, the American people, deserve to know is who was behind the lobbying group that got them to add that, um, that illegal streaming thing to that bill? Because what you really want to do is you want to know who was gross enough to go to their lobbyists and say, hey, this is a great fucking time for you to make whatever we want illegal, illegal, and you can get it under the rug. We really need uh, to know. Sony, Universal, Paramount. No, of course, but that's what I'm saying is we need to know, we need to have it on paper. It needs to be on paper. That's what it is. I, I, I just told you. I get it. I'm just saying it's, you, you can't, I, I I don't know. I just, we need to see. Nobody's going to take your word to the bank, unfortunately. Come on. Yeah, that's what I'm saying is like, that's what I'm saying. We need it like out there. Somebody write an article in the fucking New York Times and point out exactly what happened there so that when it's time to vote next, you know who not to fucking vote for. Well, well I thought about that. Where you talk. Well, yeah, but that's what I'm saying. Is well, like this, 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 better. <laughs> this Alex Barrettson guy should spend his time doing exactly what I just said. What were Who were the companies that tried to tack on this horse shit onto a bill that was just meant to help the American people. Who was behind that? And fuck those companies all fucking day. Hey, Matt, and then show me a list of all the companies that made out like bandits during the lockdown so we can then weigh that against everybody else who had to fucking go out of business. You know? Amazon, Walmart. I mean, hold on. <clears throat> Keep in mind, Simon, you can't you can't just blanket statement that, though. Because, like, let's say I'm a PPE company. I've been making PPE for 15 years. Just legitimate protective gear, right? You can't punish me for... Like, it's not like I was praying for a pandemic. I just happened to make stuff that, during a pandemic, became... You know what I mean? I agree with you. Like, I, I understand what you're saying. The, the Amazons and them need to fucking fork over some cash. But they need to, it, yes, they absolutely need to fork over cash, but it, like you said, it needs to be on paper. It's not enough to hear it on podcasts. It's not enough to hear people talking. We all think that, oh, yeah, of course you know that Amazon made out like bandits during the full phase. That's common sense. No, man, some people don't even think about it. And maybe if they did, they'd spend their money at places other than Walmart, you know? Fuck Walmart. Or yeah. any well, you're biased, you're biased. 
Anyways, uh, this, this review of this podcast was a lot better than I thought it was going to be. I wonder if it's because we're not in the same room. But uh, I'm glad we got through it. But I thought it was going to be a lot harder to do. Well, we gave... Um, well, got- we're like an hour in somehow, so I can't believe it. I thought this whole thing was going to be an hour. All right, let's rate this and then move on. I give it a one. I can't give it anything else. I didn't want to listen to it. Once I knew who he was, you know, I just didn't. I, bleh. Simon? I give it a 0.75. Wow. Kamar, you're probably giving it like, I'm going to say you're giving it like a two and a half or a three. I'm like three and a half. Ooh. Um, I was more concerned about having a discussion these knowing our history and uh, views on certain things. But the other day, he is fucking annoying. Yeah, the guys, like, listen, when he was like, Greg Glenn, Glenn, Glenn Greenwald thinks I'm an asshole, I was like, yeah, you are. You are a fucking asshole, dude. Like, good for you. At least he knows it. But I'll give him that. I, as far as confirmation bias, it's like, yeah, it's what I, I, I agree with you, buddy. I agree with you, but it doesn't, it doesn't matter if I had a piece of paper that had a bunch of answers. We're locked down. We're going along with the politicians. That's what it is. No, I mean, listen, I, like... Say, way I don't fucking go after 9-11 shit fucking every day. Yeah, I mean, listen, there's no way I was going to risk a $6,000 fine for anything. You know what I mean? They want me to lock down. They're giving me $900 every two weeks. Fine. Fuck it. Yeah. I still have we're a lucky PlayStation we're 4. A yeah, again. If they're not cutting you checks, maybe we have a different conversation. Uh, that, that's what I was going to try to say, but you said it better than I should say. Well, that's but the thing. They are. They're doing what a government should in a case like this. There we go. All right, let's move on to the uh, angry LA restaurateurs. This will take two minutes, Simon says. What, uh, what are their names again? 50 days to John Cesarian and Craig Susser. We got both those names right. Yeah, I was thinking that in the pregame when you were when you said both you banged both their names out. I was like, you couldn't get a Patreon name to save your life, but these guys both have fucking like Armenian names, and you just had no problem. I write the names on my phone of the guests in really big font. Gotcha. So it's easy to get around phonetically. Uh, the Patreons I read off email, and I can barely. Gotcha. Makes All sense. All I'll say about this podcast is I'm glad the two guys were in total agreement. Craig, the one guy, he was less of a restaurant. He had a, one restaurant and the vegan ice cream company was like hoping that the intentions of the politicians and all this were in everyone's best interest. Where the other guy was like, no, fuck, it, fuck, fuck, they're all supposed to climb in. It wasn't just a pile on of but her restaurant owner. Uh, no, it wasn't. I mean, again, they're, I understand why they're both angry. I totally get it. But they weren't in agreement. Are you saying they were in they agreement were, or weren't? Are you were saying Pam? Not. Were not in agreement. I mean, they were in agreement, though. They just, they didn't agree on, like, the, the intent. That was on where the they... Mayor. Well, and, and the, the mayor and the governor. Gavin Newsom. One of them had a personal relationship with both of those guys, obviously, and could not be bad because something was going to hurt his business even more. No, but I think the that other was, guy was like, fuck that guy. I and think the that other was guy a, didn't give a fuck. Simon, I think that was just a running joke. I don't think he actually had a relationship with either of them. I think the other guy that was, the other oh, guy that was I saying... So. I think they both have relationships. Well, no, the guy that was saying, I don't give a fuck, fuck them, he actually had a relationship with uh, Garcetti, because he said, he's like, he's, that was the part that pissed me off the most. I was like, that should immediately, like, once someone exposes that, you should be out of office. If you're using your power, that's such a waste of taxpayer money to be sending what? inspectors to the same place every night. Such a waste of money. Well, yeah, the corrupt to take down. I just thought, like... If you're going to tell people they can't go to restaurants, they can go to restaurants, you resign. Like, it's, it's, it's one or the other, you know what I mean? Because you're like, everyone has that, you like, yeah, everyone's got locked down, but me, just little old me, I can go to this thing with four people or whatever, like, I'm not hurting anyone. And if you're the head enforcing it and you do it, it's, it's rotten, man. 
Listen, I, go ahead, Simon. No, no, I was just going to say, I agree, Kamar. Um, the politicians across the board, like Canadian, American, wherever, they have so fucking little to do. All they have to do is remain, have this appearance. We all know it's corrupt, but maintain an co- appearance of um, fairness and equality and non-corruption. And if you can't even do that, you're absolutely right. Just fucking resign. That's frustrating. I mean, I will say this. If I think it's unfair if like one time, because listen, you're you're in the fucking you're in the eye all the time. It's like like imagine if you, every time you got caught with a mask off, someone was there with a camera and was like, you're the one. You know what I mean? Like, listen, if you're eating out every day while you're simultaneously like restaurants need to be shut down, you're a fucking asshole. You should be out of office for sure. If they caught you one time at a restaurant, I, I don't know necessarily that like that warrants. I mean, then no one's. Well, we need politicians, unfortunately. As fucking stupid as it's that like, is. Yeah, we need to hold them accountable. An actor or whatever decides that, you know, I'm an anti-drug guy and uses that to push his career forward. Meanwhile, he's been doing drugs the whole time. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I mean, I listen, I agree. If you get caught doing that, you're done. Well, then you could use the shitty other side of the coin, which is like... Maybe he doesn't really want to shut restaurants down. And you could argue he's actually supporting that restaurant that he's at. So in a way, you know what I mean? Like, I'm not, I'm just playing Diablo Avocado here, Simon. Yeah, okay, you should have said that way before he started talking. What, Simon? Like, I said I'm sure he's eating for free. Maybe. In, uh, in one uh, breath in the last review, we're like, we're trusting what the government does and our messages and all this and then you find this out it's like that's unacceptable in these times and they are saying like in normal times doing something not right you know like rob ford smoking crack <laughs> <laughs> so i mean no one's clean but if this pandemic is so serious and if these decisions are so impactful on people's lives. The people making them. I love when people talk about like time, salaries, and stuff. And like, because they're all getting paid fine. Of course. They're, not, insane. they're not feeling this. They might be feeling a, a power run, but they're not feeling uh, detrimental effects of this. But do you guys think restaurant workers are essential workers? Well, I mean, I think we're going to redefine what essential means after this year. Or we're going to have to. So if both of these things that their staff were going into work, risking their lives, to feed people at a prop, like, I, I don't think they're essential. Like, we don't need them. It's part of the social fabric, but we don't need them. Well, I mean, Kamar, you're a big fucking keep the economy open guy. You do technically need restaurants if you want the economy to continue to... If you just shut every restaurant down, like these guys were saying, it has a ripple effect so far down the line that's, like, tough to understand. Well, that's the difference here. Um, restaurant workers, as we said before, are receiving compensation and are able to get by, whereas um, it's a much rougher... Uh, situation in America with these these jobs, but I just was thinking, like, I don't love restaurants. I love restaurants if someone else is paying. Me. You know what I mean? No what? Well, I just, I mean, you're asking me if I think restaurant workers are essential when they deemed restaurants non-essential. It seems like a, a non-starter. Of course, they're okay. not essential. The business is essential. Well, these guys were fine. They were. I mean, I, let's talk more about like that woman who had to close her patio, and then the film crew sets up right around. Like that's the type of fucking injustice that these guys are talking about. You know? Well, hypocrisy. Well, again, the one guy. Hold on, though. Again, the one guy. You know, the one guy defended it pretty well in that he said, "Listen." The argument there is that they have rigorous testing on those sets. That's the only way they're allowed to run those sets. So they know for sure 
No one on set definitively has fucking COVID. And then they hit the nail on the head five minutes later that it's all unionized. So, because one of them was like, well, why didn't they just get her restaurant to cater the thing? Again, these movie sets, top to bottom, union craft service, union lighting, union gaffers, dollies, it's all fucking unionized. That's it. There's no other way around it. Yeah, so I mean, and this, but these are the things, this is the problem is like, that stuff gets politicized so heavily. And then when you really break it down to the bare bones facts, it's not as egregious as you would think. You know what I mean? Like, I, when you see the video of her crying, it obviously seems awful. And you're like, this is, this is the worst. Why are we doing this? But then, like I said, the three of us sit down and we get a few more details and we talk it out. And it's like, okay, it still sucks for sure. I'm not taking away her tears. I'm not saying she should just like roll over and be like, oh, I get it. I understand why she's angry. I'm just saying it's, you understand a little bit better once you dig deeper, maybe. Yeah, I mean, I guess. That, uh, that's the whole thing, right? It's Red onions, so, yum, love the them. The information you get. Hi, is, Mr. Uh, O'Nox. How are you doing? Yes, red onions and delicious. And jalapenos. And the other tough part is, from what I understand, like I have a dog now, I heard if you go to Rito Center, which is a mall in uh, Ottawa, there's a bunch of people at the food court. Garlic? Yeah, see, that's ridiculous. Like, what, there's, what still, like there's a food court in the Rito Center, or any mall, right? Where there's 10 restaurants and then there's a eating area? Yeah. So they have those open and there's a seating area. I mean, they still space off tables between tables, but at the end of the day, it's a big restaurant. But restaurants were open at that point. So like the Rito Center isn't open during the lockdown. It's closed down. It's not a center. Just, just now. But I'm just saying that's such a loosely controlled area. Well, well, more like, okay, so we don't even know at this point if... How are you doing today, Mr. Knox? ...in the light or in the day compared to the night. But let's are say it's there? Good, right? And they were right about that. And you were... That's why open-air dining made sense, right? You... No walls, everybody's breathing fresh air, it's, it's better, whatever. I mean, I don't know if you saw here, but at one point during, not the lockdown, but during, you know, the pandemic, there were patios that were rooms. There was no windows, they were just outdoor rooms. And that somehow circumvented, do you see what I'm saying? No, I, I do, I, you know I think the whole thing is ridiculous. Um, whether they're... Yeah, but you still see I what he was saying. You agree with him that there was like, it was an indoor, it was an indoor-outdoor thing. So, that's so here they are closing down legitimate outdoor patios when, I know it's two different places, but they were kind of doing the same thing here, but then letting the rooms stay a place. Is there, this is the problem. There was never like an across-the-board thing. Nobody understood no, what the... This to the enforcement or implication of the rules. That was the yeah. biggest takeaway I took from that, and it's confusing, and how they're talking about, like, they find out through the news that they have to shut down. And another thing is that you actually trust, with a good restaurant, the cleanliness and the um, sanitation done, more so than the McDonald's which you can go to. Like, it's just, it's so inconsistent, and my biggest takeaway was rapid testing. Yeah, here's my right? here's what yeah here's my problem though is like Joe kept talking about that they they're talking about it in rich guy terms those t those tests those rapid tests cost Joe two hundred bucks a pop he was saying for guests and then they were like well you just add it to your bill so okay I go for a I go out for a hundred dollar meal and you're just gonna tack on a four hundred dollar rapid test for me and my wife cool it's funny those are arbitrary. It's funny to think, though, Maddie, that, like, whatever the number is that it costs for the test, let's say it's $200. Let's say it's $100 per test. And you're like, okay, it's $100, but why? Like, where along that line is why there, like, $100? Is what I'm saying. They recruit the R&D. Well, I also I wonder know, if that's... 
listen, how many because restaurants to hold on, hold on. Let's be serious too. How many restaurants too are just gonna pocket a couple grand a night administering you fugazi tests, just putting a Q tip up your nose? Being like negative. Negative. <laughs> It'd be a pretty good scam. Well, they're already selling fake COVID tests. You haven't seen this? No. I'm sure yeah, they're out there. Yeah, it's just fake. The, the company deal? set up totally fake COVID self-testing. You bought a couple? Kind of like Ancestry.ca. That was in this month's Jewish newsletter. A, 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 polite, a polite warning. <laughs> There's fake COVID well, the, tests well, going on. Well, the around. one guy, the one guy that was interesting has, has reached into actual doing testing. But that guy's a real entrepreneur. He had, you know, nightclubs, restaurants, everything. He was like, fuck these guys. And I wonder, it'd be cool if they never let these guys make reservations again. The whole city. Like, whether they got to get uh, punished or caught accountable, this is their cross to bear. Yeah, I mean, I don't you know. That, Matt? No, I, I understand what he was saying, yeah. He's saying that, like, uh, Gavin Newsom and uh, Garcetti are never going to be able to get a reservation at any restaurant in L.A. County for the rest of time because of this. Or California. If that, if that California becomes exactly what he wants, and then he'll be the king. He'll get all <laughs> the rest. <laughs> Oh, the red. It's interesting to see how it plays out, but like I said in the last one, we're taking therapy here, so it's just a different perspective. Yeah. But, I, you know, watching Joe flee L.A., it's got to say something, man. He got the fuck out of there. Like, like literally, his backyard was on fire. Well, I mean, his backyard had been on fire for the past three years, so... Fair enough, Maddie. Fair enough. Yeah, I mean, obviously... I think once the fire got his chicken, he was just like, fuck this place. As every day goes by, he looks less and less crazy for what he's doing. I mean, I never thought I it was crazy. Like the... I never thought it was crazy. He's rich. He has, he has. I can do whatever I want money, and he did it. That's... I, I don't remember... Spotify, but I remember when he moved to Texas, it was like, this is a little rash. <laughs> I don't remember what episode it was in, but Joe was like... You know, I never had a problem with YouTube. I never had a problem with anybody. But I saw the writing on the wall, and I wanted to control my own destiny. That's the point. Well, why have that money if not to do it? I mean, he, uh, you know, he also loved paying a high level of tax. So. Well, I'm sure not when you're making those Spotify deals, the hundred million plus, the four hundred, five hundred million dollar deal. The $1.2 billion deals, you know? I mean, listen, I can't imagine giving the government $30 million. That seems fucking ludicrous. But I also can't imagine making $100 million. You know what I mean? When you put it in those terms, it's kind of weird. Because, like, it, listen, if someone was making a penny a day and you said to them, well, I make $100 a day, but I have to give, you know, 35 of it to the government, they'd be like, what? That's insane. You know, you just multiply, you know. Just make it exponentially larger, and it's the same fucking shit. Kamar, you're muted, buddy. Yeah. I think when you finally see it, Maddie, when you finally, like, have that check in front of you, the Joe's 500 million from Spotify, and he then looks at the amount he has to give to the government, that's when it, fuck it. You're like, uh, yoink, and all that's left is, like, a cloud of dust that you had for Texas, you know? I'm surprised he didn't just take it all the way to Puerto Rico, then. Can you hear me now? Yeah, we can hear you. That looks bad. That looks bad. Yeah. Texas just looks like a, a, a patriot. Well, there's no Joe? governor's there's no governor's mansion in Puerto Rico to visit, so. Yeah. Joe only looks stupid if California open up back to business a, seven months ago and lowered the tax rate. Like he wants. He still would look stupid. He still would look stupid. I don't know. I still think he owns his studio in LA, and I actually have yeah, a feeling. Really? I actually have a feeling he still owns his home in LA. Given that the market there is I, probably well, shit, so I don't think he's. And right. I thought. Go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. Man. No, no, I'm done. No, no, he looks. I was just gonna say I thought he had offered to lend somebody the house at some point, so you could stay here. Maybe I'm not. No, maybe. I, I again, I you know, I've been paying. 
not that close attention. Um, yeah, I just I don't think he's I don't think he's totally cut ties with LA. Is my point. I think he makes it seem that way, but I don't. Uh, I don't think it's. I think every day he cuts another tie. Yeah, I mean, listen, he's just trying to do what you know, what any rich guy I would bet, do, and just get all I his friends he, there. He woke up in Texas. It was like, what the fuck am I doing? What did I do? And every day he feels way better about his decision. I mean, like I said, I think when you're that rich, it's just a lot easier. Like, if I moved to Texas right now, you know, it would be a lot tougher. And I'm sure every yeah. day I would wake up like, oh, you know, well, this is easier and easier. But, you know, he's got a fucking ton of cash. And he has so right. many connections. Like, think about it. He moved there. And how many people were there to greet him? Oh, he definitely had connections. I'm just saying LA has gotten worse since he's left. That's true. That is true. LA has gotten far worse. And it doesn't seem like it's going to stop anytime soon. It'll be interesting to see. Simon's in and out of here. Let's, let's see if we can get a rating out of Simon. We'll start with you, Kamar. You want to rate this episode? I give it a three. I can kind of hear you, Simon. You're like in and out. I give it a three. I give it a three because um, they didn't agree on everything. Okay. A three just because they didn't agree on everything. Well, I agree with everything they said. It's ridiculous. Okay. Um, I mean, I give this one... Uh, I guess I give it a two. These guys were more enjoyable than Berenson. And again, these guys have a legit gripe, I think, in that they own businesses. <laughs> um, whereas Berenson just, like, I don't know what his... I don't know where he's at. I just don't think restaurants are the most important things in the world. So. Well, no, but to say restaurants are the mo most important thing in the world is, you know, it's unfair because they are a huge part of a working economy, a massive... massive. Part. Most of my life, and when you were a waiter, they were the most important thing in your life. So, imagine those people right now, as a society. Like, I, I it, it is interesting discussion on how important restaurants are or are not, especially when like Burger King and all that are, stay open. I mean, listen, it really depends on. Go ahead, sorry. sorry. No, no, please, you. I was just gonna say it really depends on how important you being breaking bread with people is. Like to Kamar, obviously not that important. To some people, a huge part of their existence, you know? People are more well off than most. I mean, Restaurants are luxury. Listen, there was a time where Simon probably went out for dinner twice a week. Simon If Simon. I could afford to, I'd go to I could yeah, that list, just because we're lazy. Sure, I sure. I didn't mean it. Go ahead, Kamar. Sorry. I'd go every night. Oh, yeah. If I was super rich, I'd probably be fucking... I'd be the fattest fuck on earth. I'd be eating... Every night. Yeah. Filet mignon every night. Don't get me wrong. I mean, if what you're saying, Kamar, is that of all the things you have to give up, eating out to me, like, I find other things more important on the scale. Yeah. But that's me. I can't decide what's more important to other we people. We haven't agreed, but... I mean, again, Kamar, I agree, too. Like, obviously, hospitals are far more important than restaurants. You know, we can agree there. Um, Grocery stores. But I think if we're talking about from an economic standpoint, I think they, the restaurant industry funnels money into so many different pockets. Probably way oh, more really than we huge. can ever. Yeah. You think 30,000 restaurants in L.A. Exactly. And then think of all the distributors. All the, like... Yeah, uh, yeah, it's staggering. Simon, did you rate this one? Of, it's a part of industry. Did you rate this one, Simon? We were, you were in and out of consciousness there. I give it a one. Okay. I, it, it wasn't what I was looking for. But yeah, let's just do that last guy. Did this what one drop? Did that one drop on Christmas too? Is that one that one came out or Christmas Eve? It was Christmas Eve Christmas that one Eve. came out. Yeah, and then this one came out fucking Boxing Day for you Canadian folk. And just the 26th if you live anywhere else in the world. <laughs> No, I think Boxing Day is pretty common. No, it's only, I think, Canada, the UK, and Australia. Commonwealth. Oh, shit. Fuck, I forgot. Boys, um, I was, uh, do you, do you guys watch The Adventures of Ford Fairlane? Cool, the Adventures of Ford Fairlane. Why do I know the name? Well, they were talking about uh, Dice moving out to Texas and the guy's dad. Was... I thought the best part of this thing was him with the tattoo. 
Yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, and I forgot to say, you guys ever seen the movie Waiting? Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's the movie game. Because <laughs> I got nothing else to go on. I don't, Ooh, even, have my, I forgot I don't it. even have my fucking book here. Simon, my book's sitting right there, isn't it? I have your book. Cunt. <laughs> He's guessing for you. No, no. No, we're good, Simon. Good. It's all good. Find out what year a movie came out. How much it So what are we doing? Warren Fairline or waiting? Waiting. 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 I just I, I they talked about Ford Fairlane and I, I that was a big movie because you guys know I love Eddie Like Smith. Can I just say for the record too, if uh, if we decide to uh, do this in person again, um, I think you each need one of these little arm things here. Fucking game. Oh, we'll see the person. Game. And then we'll know. Fucking changer. Oh, I'm but I hope I hope we You're decide so to do it again. I said I'm jealous. Trust me. Yeah, we're you good. You look good, Matt. You look good. We'll get you one. They're not expensive. It's waiting, starring Ryan Reynolds, Anna Ferris, Jess Long, David Ketner, John Francis, Bailey, Caitlin, Double Day, Alan Ubach, Hi McBride, and um, if I'm not incorrect, uh, Dane Cook was in as well. Yeah, Dane Cook was, I'm pretty sure. He does not get a credit. Weird. weird. In That's the very weird. Okay, Simon, I just threw, I, I went... I have no idea, so I just threw something out here. Two thousand two. And I said two thousand five. Two thousand five! Wow. wow. Yeah, the winner. Here we go. Here we go. Hey, wow. Do you want me to go first, then? It's been a long I haven't time. Ri- I haven't written anything else down yet. Are you already there? No, I haven't. Yeah. Okay, yeah. give me two seconds then. Here. So, uh, okay. Wow, I haven't had that in a while. Yeah, nice work, Cy. You're Look, a you're doing real pretty good shit. about yourself there, Simon. Only if I win, Simon. Only if I win. That was also in the Jewish newsletter this month. Also celebrating oh, 15 God. years Wait, is waiting. <laughs> <laughs> produced, by, <laughs> produced by Isaac Schweitzer. Hashtag Semitic. All right, here we go. Um, fuck, 2005, like... There's no way this movie costs a lot of money. All our special effects. Distributed by Lion King. Fucked in my pepper, Joe. This movie, I don't know. Okay, I'm ready. I'm ready, Simon. I'm sorry. I said it cost $8.9 million to make, and it made $24.9 million. Probably way too high. And I said, I said it cost six and a half to make, and it made twenty-five. Oh, so fucking close, Simon. Budget three million dollars. Wow. Box office eighteen point six. Oh my Jeez, god. Just had to go a little bit lower. Wow, what a piece of shit. But my initial reaction just before I had a chance it was five and twenty, and I changed it to six and twenty-five. But no, I just didn't make anything, and it couldn't have cost a lot to make because it was in like, the old rules. You won outright. Yeah, and now yeah. there's a five million on both. Hold on, I'm giving. I give Simon a. I give Simon a dub there all day. Oh, oh yeah. Well, well I got two or three, so I think it's good. No, no, I, I give you all three there. Get the fuck out of here. Wow. All right. Oh, yeah. First time ever. Well, if I'm, the host, sweep, if I'm the yeah. host of this thing, I'm giving them the sweep, so there you go, no, Simon. It's, a sweep. it's, it, it's okay. a sweep under the old rules, but uh, it's a win. It's a win. It's a win. Wow. I mean, you guys yeah. have enough trouble with the release date. I wasn't aware of these new unified rules, so under these old <laughs> rules, I guess. It's all good. Okay, it used to be $50 million, and now we are going down to $5 million on both. Okay, uh, the other movie game. We'll start with Wild Reynolds. Well, who, like, I don't know who's sitting on whose side here. So is it me next? It would be you, Matt. It okay. would be you, Matt. Okay, Deadpool. Oh, shit. What's that fucking guy's name? Um... Come here, Cheeks. Come on. Come on, bud. With the red curly hair there. What's his name? I, I'll never remember. I'm too fucking crazy. Okay, and that was the second movie game. Good stuff. Oh, uh, no, I really won't remember. What's his name? T.J. Harris? Or T.J. 
I never would have thought of it. Yeah, TJ. I, have... I think you could have also said Sorry. Brolin, right? Josh Brolin, yeah. Wasn't Josh Brolin? I didn't even remember guy? if he was. Yeah, he played Bishop, I think. Well, we're not going to quick movie game. Yeah, sorry. Either way. No, no, it's all right. You won You won the movie game and lost the movie game, man. Let's go down. Simon, can I ask you a, a yeah. question off the record right now? Are you smoking darts okay, in this? Are you smoking cigarettes in the studio right now? Oh yeah, he is. I've been going to the door. Oh, you've been going to the door. Okay, good. Because I was gonna yeah. say you're gonna need to buy some Glade plugins then, because your brother will be none yeah, too fucking I, pleased. I still have to buy Glade plugins because I'm smoking by the door. Okay, yeah, because we're out. I noticed when I was in there, it didn't have a fresh strawberry smell the other day, and uh, okay. all yeah. day he's been smoking there, Maddie. No, no, I watched you him. Got on the line. Now that I remember, he has been going out as he gets up to go. No, out. no. At the beginning, he wasn't even going I started, out. I started inside, because oh. <laughs> I was like, I was somehow doing it for you and Kamar, but it wasn't. It was all for my brother. That was the whole thing. Gotcha, so, yeah. Either way. I fucked up. Don't worry about it. All right, let's roll Here, through. Look, let's, I'm at the let's roll through to what Kamar said was the highlight of the week. Uh, what I still feel in the old days would have been labeled an MMA. I just... You're fucking not. Okay, a bit aggressive, but fine. 1584, <laughs> odd white. This so guy... What's the comedian? Ron White. Ron White. Did you think this was like his jujitsu son, Todd? No, I didn't. That also threw me for a loop. Because I thought, did they mislabel it? Or... <laughs> this guy had an interesting look. He looked like a, like a Narc. video game um, like a character. Like a, like the, I don't know. He looked like a... What's that fucking Drake's Quest? or I don't know. I, clearly, I'm a terrible gamer. He looked like yeah. he was like... Out of like a well dressed apocalypse. Yeah, it was. He's weird. an artist. Well, yeah, he's an art. Yeah, and that that was that threw me for a loop too. But he did. Uh... Now, Go ahead. First thing first, um, I looked up uh, SpongeBob on Wikipedia. His name is not mentioned. Okay. So he was like um, a studio artist, like fifty that wrote. Maybe he drew SpongeBob the first time. I don't know. Like, I thought I'd be mentioned in Wikipedia. But uh, we have a friend who works in animation. What do you mean? You drew SpongeBob the first time. I have a friend who. No, just part of I have a friend who still works in animation. I have multiple friends that work in animation. I didn't mention it. Well, one friend we had did it and hated it because they're just drawing the same thing over and over and over and over again with whatever it be. He got stuck doing backgrounds, I think, come on. But I work. thought this guy was going to be a gazillionaire because of his SpongeBob SquarePants, but he was just a studio uh, artist. Yeah, I mean, I got that right away, that he wasn't, like, the maker of SpongeBob SquarePants. No. He worked at an animation studio, and like you said, we know people who work there, and we know what's involved in it. A lot of it is just fucking... Real bullshit. Just monotony. Art. Yeah. Yeah. And like, talk about having your talents wasted. Like, the guy we know, Kamar, I think we're talking about the same person. His art is so different than what he would have been doing at Disney or wherever the fuck he worked. And when you see where he's at now, you're like, oh my God, imagine that guy had been wasted there, you know? Yeah, definitely if he stayed there wasted, but I'm sure he picked up skills or knowledge. Uh, oh, doing even that. For sure. But, like, did you guys watch the uh, Tim Burton Nightmare Before Christmas, How Did That Get Made thing? You know what I'm talking yeah, about? Yeah, the, the, I know what you're talking about. I didn't watch it, though. Anyway, it, it just, the interesting part about it was they were talking about Tim Burton because he used to work for Disney as an animator. That's, the, and Dis, that's why Disney it. owned that movie because you have to sign right, like, anything he, I come up with while I'm here is somehow yours bullshit. They Sorry. talk about all of that. No, no, it's fine. But more what he was saying was, like, I was there drawing these characters that Disney was never going to use. Like, we were on totally opposite ends of a wave, you know? And just, it was never going to fly. You had to go out on the top. Same with this guy. You know? 
Did you go look at his heart? I, yeah, I don't like it. I didn't. I listened Except to this do, today, so it was, you know, cutting it down a little bit. I wire. do love the portrait that he did of uh, Eddie Van Halen. That's actually amazing. But like he said, I think he's called cartoonist. But to me, it's super cartoonist. Yeah, I mean, I, that's what I got through as cartoons, I guess, if you wanted to like classify it as something. I have no problem with the word cartoon. It doesn't bother me. But I'm not a famous artist. So whatever. But he went into like business art right away, not art. You know what I mean? Like you figure out you make 135 prints, you sell the original. Like he hit the ground running. That's, I know, but that's what you gotta do, man. Like you want to be a starving artist, or you want to support your family. You know? If Joe decided to get back into art, he could do the same thing. Joe could make a million dollars off one of his stupid little pencil drawings. I was gonna I'm say Joe has it. a. Joe has 10 million followers on Instagram. Of course he could sell fucking... Do, do, do you know what I mean? Like, he said to Joe, and Joe's like, no, I'm not going to do that. But you know Joe no, likes money, so... What I like about this guy's art, what I appreciate about artists, is the looseness and how easy it seems. And for me, like, I don't have that same looseness, so I appreciate somebody who can whip up, like, a sketch. Like Woo! And you're okay with the imperfection, you know? As an artist, you still think? Sometimes. I mean, because it, it, that's the other thing, like, um, whatever medium it is, whether it's drawing on an iPad or drawing on a light board or painting or using pencil or whatever, they're all different mediums, you know what I mean? So I do respect them as a... I know you know, but it's like uh, painting is the most interesting thing. It's not like it just happens in an instant. You might paint for two hours and stop. Right. I mean, but some people paint really fast, come on. Like, look at, uh, I was just talking to somebody about uh, Mark Gonzalez, uh, Maddie. The Gons. And you look at his, like, he makes big bucks off his art, let alone using it on so much uh, product, you know what I mean? But there's a guy who, if he makes his paintings in any more than, like, 20 minutes, I'd be shocked. I mean, I think that's all they take. That's his thing. Not hard work. Right off the top of his head. Uh, That's how I imagine. Maybe it takes him 10 years to do a painting. What do I know? (laughs) No, you're probably right, but I mean, I always wonder if those people just know that they are a legend and that any that they can just do that, just spit out art and and live off of that. I, mean, I don't know. I always wonder. And that's probably a bad example, the guns, because it's so simple. But you know, take like uh, well, no, take Todd White for fuck's sake. But again, I don't know how long. To me, it seems like they're quick kind of caricatures. But for all I know. He but was painting. Hours hours. I guess. I guess. I, I. I don't know how long it takes to do stuff. Like watercolors, for that whole Kamar. That's just a really quick and it dries fast. You put it on fast. It's like that's the, that's it. Mm-hmm. Fair enough. I. I, I find painting like, uh, pretty acrylic cool. Acrylic paint takes a couple of minutes to dry, whereas oils they don't dry for weeks and months, and you could be working on you know like an hour a day for 10 years. Um, we'll just say, uh, the jacket story was cool. Yeah. It refresh my memory. He was at a show and a fan came up to me and said, that jacket's amazing. Well, no, it's like he like, got the jacket from someone first. He was at a show and he said that jacket's amazing yeah, to someone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the guy said, we'll try it on. If it fits, you can have it. He got it thinking, I won't take this guy's jacket, I want this guy's jacket, and then gave it off to someone else. I mean, take it all of you juicy stuff, I really enjoyed this podcast. It's a real just the traveling pants type scenario. Yeah. Yeah, but Kamar, there was a, I mean, sure, you just said take away the jujitsu and you really like this episode, I would still say that... (laughs) Woo! I... (laughs) Oh, this is the worst podcast COVID. ever. I would still say that um, like three quarters of this was jujitsu. Yeah. And that's why you find the class by the MMA, but the guys never competed in an MMA tournament. Which I, or you have to compete in some sort of competitive tournament 
to qualify for your episode to be MMA. No, often no. MMA. the golden snitch. Yeah. All he does is run. All all the golden snitch does is run. Touche, touche. Yeah. Hold on a second. This guy was a coach who owned his own jujitsu. That's it. That's an MMA episode. Yeah. He also happened to be. That's what I'm saying. I think the comedy club isn't a comedy episode. I mean, th this is my thing, Kamar, is like, I'm with you. I'm with you in that they didn't talk the whole time, but they got real technical. They talked about a lot of fucking jujitsu. I mean, even I'll give you this. There was stuff that we had heard before that is not quite jujitsu, but it's still in that realm. Like the story about the guy that killed the guy. You know what I mean? We've heard that story like 10 times now, um, which is... I guess not an MMA story, but it's around that whole community. So I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Um, it, was, it was interesting to hear how James Maynard shared with Joe how Anthony Bourdain died. <laughs> he called son of a bitch. I would be pissed. Maybe he, knew, maybe he just assumed that Joe had already hurt. Well, I hate him. That's not how you break the news with someone. Guess I'm not going to be doing my jujitsu match with our friend that's now dead. Hope you already knew. Yeah, what a fucking. He hung himself. I thought that was uh, funny. Yeah, I, I mean, I thought that was very telling of Maynard. He's a cold son of a bitch. Yeah, seems that way. Um, what was super cool is we talked about the art fraud. Yeah. And, and there were two forms. There was one they were just ripping them off and selling it. And the other one, they were just photocopying a SpongeBob and said, well, this guy did it. And he was like, well, that's not as bad. But then he broke into the story about the detective who was going to investigate it, who ended up getting uh, convicted. Yeah. And her name is uh, um, Stephanie Lazar. Okay. It's interesting because... But a year ago, I went on a huge uh, rabbit hole on this thing called JCS Criminal Psychology. Okay. Oh, yeah, I remember and you telling us about this. It's, it's just videos of, like, interviews. Yeah, I remember, people, like, I remember you going in depth about this. Yeah, you you were on, like, a real fucking tear. Yeah, and this, I watched her, the way they do her, is it's totally like they said, is that they bring her in, thinking it's for something else, but it's ask these questions. And she sort of incriminated herself by, like, falling apart. But that was my matrix moment. Well, that's interesting. Mm-hmm. I mean, listen, this guy seemed... This guy was definitely very interesting. He was not, like, a dull... Like, I understand... I just think it's the end of the MMAs. I don't think he's doing... I don't think he's labeling anything in MMA anymore. Maybe he's not as part I of the Spotify him. deal. But this was... This is just such a coincidence that he started MMA the first time he saw UFC and has been doing jiu-jitsu and is like a too damn black belt or whatever. But they just talked about belts too much. The whole thing was I feel MMA like before, but it wasn't before, MMA. Before the Spotify deal, um, he would have never have released this on a Sunday. Or on a whatever. Saturday. You know? No, yeah. oh, I agree. He I, just seems like he wanted to at least get his three episodes in for the week. Well, it's, I mean, it really is interesting because, I, you know, someone was talking about uh, the UFC this week. And, um, oh, it was big, big John McCarthy was just talking about how Dana, you know, the only reason Dana did all he did this year was to get the $720 million from ESPN because he had to put on X amount of shows or else he doesn't unlock the money. And Dana got real rich off that. And, he, you know, Dana does does this whole thing under the guise of, like, we kept all these people, you know. And and then Big John McCarthy was pointing out, he's like, you're just cutting people left, right, and center that are older and want to get paid more to bring on these young guys that you can pay, like, 10 grand to fight to. And, oh. Yeah. I mean, oh, we lost Kamar totally, I think. Um, yeah. It, you know, it's... It, I hope that Joe doesn't have that. I mean, we know he doesn't because he's gone on vacation already, I think, during this thing. But but, but again, he released episodes, so there's a... I, I just, I fear that We're he... We're going to have to wait on that one, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, again, it's... Who cares? What do we really care at the end of the day? It's his fucking show. He can do what the fuck he wants. 
No, I, I don't. I just, listen, those Saturday drops were always for something important. I got an alien guy in and we had to do it today. This one just being like, I don't know, if it was something great, I would have been in fucking heat, you know? I'm not anti-having episodes to listen to. Just if you're going to make it on the weekend like that, it's got to be something special. You want something, you know? Listen, man, I, I couldn't agree with you more. Couldn't agree with you more. I, I thought it was a joke. Yeah. Like, I logged on because I was, I, you know, just to check. Because now there's no, like, I don't get a, a notification anymore. Whereas with Apple, it was okay. like, you know, Joe Rogan has a new podcast. Now I just check the app every day. And I was like, I cannot fucking believe. And, and like you, I was like, this guy must have CIA documents that say who shot Kennedy or something like and no, it was just, uh, you know, I used to animate and whatever. If it happened for you guys, I genuinely wouldn't have known that that podcast was one of the things, so that was good anyway. <laughs> oh, the group text, yeah, yeah, yeah. If I just wouldn't have checked, I would have assumed that it was due for the week and we were good. Like you said, I don't get a notification anymore, so. Well, I almost sent that out as like a warning to you guys, like, just so you're, you know, not blindsided tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no, I got it. I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, no, I couldn't fucking believe it. I didn't like it, it but I appreciate it. Yeah, I mean, like Kamar said, it ended up probably being the best one of, not even probably, it ended up being the best one of the week, for sure, but we could have just... It was. It, it was such a low bar to compare, right? Yeah, and I could have just done without it, totally. Could have totally done without okay. it. It kind of seemed like Joe could have just given everybody... He could have taken a vacation. Everyone could have taken a vacation. Yeah, that's yeah. But I, that's... I just like that difference in one was too much for me, man. And listen, justifiably, like I know I talk like lockdown is good and all, but I don't know, I don't know. But I also am not going to go crying on mountain talk. You know what I mean? Because I don't know. No, I mean again, you and I had the discussion like. You know, you're you just opened a business, <coughs> pardon me, and then had to lock down. So, you know, I know you're feeling it obviously more than I am, but it just seemed like weird timing too. Right before Christmas, released this guy who's like, you shouldn't even have to worry about COVID. Trust me, I'm a journalist. I work at the New York Times. Joe tells you every week not to trust the New York Times. You know what I mean? Like, it just it, it seemed like bizarre world too. I kind of I kind of felt like Joe did a disservice by doing this right before Christmas like that. And it, even if it, I, I don't know, I guess if he's right, then it's not a disservice, but who fuck it though? Yeah, I don't know. That's a real, I don't know. Oh, you just, somehow you just cut Simon off while well, you came in. That was fucking incredible. <laughs> oh, well, I've been trying to come in for 10 minutes. I'm so sorry to listeners and uh, to you guys. Oh, it's fine. This is already a botched podcast. It was from the beginning. Don't worry. Why have my we lost died. Simon now, though? What's going on here? This is fucking ridiculous. But as my phone was dying, it looked like Simon was saying, like, the most smartest, wisest, no. intelligent thing. Impossible. <laughs> I was so sad I was missing it. No, that's... I think we both know that's not the case. Did Simon's phone now die as well? Is that what could possibly be going on? That'd be nice. So I wouldn't be the only one who let the podcast down. I have two boxes here. It says Kamar Hargadon waiting and Simon waiting. And now we've just lost Simon. Okay. I'll, I've been calling every line. Oh, the other thing was that when I was talking about that detective they took down. Yeah. Is, uh, remember, he was like, oh, they took it down for a bite mark. I was like, so oh, that's impossible. He said DNA in a bite mark. Okay, so it was really DNA then. The bite mark was just like a... There's some sort of... Uh, we're left with things. Okay, there. This guy started like a hundred FaceTime conversations. Yeah, well, I don't know how this other one's there. How do I get rid of that? Fuck. I was, I was, I was panicking, Simon. I'm sorry. Yeah. No, I was good. just telling you, uh, Matt, how I, you just said the wise thing, but my phone went dead and I was left hanging on your words of wisdom. What did I say? Well, I don't know. No, he'll, it's lost. He'll have to wait till Tuesday to find <laughs> out. But Matt assured me he didn't say shit, so I wait to Tuesday. Well, I just said it couldn't have been as poignant as Kamar was building it up to be. That's why, because I couldn't remember you saying something that made me go, oh, my God. Chances are. Um, we did talk about 
we didn't talk about Bigfoot, it couldn't have been that point. No, 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 no. Yeah, no. All right, well, let's rate this and uh, end this podcast, yeah. if we could. Let's start with uh, Kamara yeah. this time. Kamara, you want to rate this guy? We know you're going to rate this one like a fucking six and a half. You were, <laughs> well, you were on this guy's jock. I think it's that thing, though, when, like I said, the first podcast, I was concerned about the conversation that was going to result because of it. And just, I was spreading every guest, but this was interesting, and uh, I don't know. I give it a three and a half. Okay. Simon? I'll give it a two. Simon's Too much jujitsu. Jujitsu. <laughs> Too much jujitsu. Yeah. Um, I'll give this one, uh, I'll still give it a three. I didn't mind, you know, so much of the jujitsu talk. I just think this one should have been labeled an MMA. And under our rules, we should have been able to fucking skip this one. Ah, uh, you should have said that from the beginning. I would agree. I don't think it was an MMA, but... I know you would have agreed. That's not the point, though, is we have fucking rules. I'm not here to bend or break rules. Like, we set them yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, just shoot me a text before we said fuck, cat. That's all. <laughs> fuck. Whatever. All right. I would have vetoed this in a second, even though I enjoyed it. And I, I'd recommend it. Okay. Well, um, to the listeners, if you made it this far, that's absolutely incredible. Normally, if you made it this far, that's great. But, like, this is a particularly shit episode due to the remoteness of everyone. So if you made it this far, wow, you must be um, in that top one percentile of listeners. Thank you so much. We appreciate the shit out of you. Uh, if you want to follow us on Twitter or Instagram, it's at JRE Podcast. You can also follow Kumar on Instagram. At Kumar Babar. You can get that Ottawa weather, weather report. <laughs> Super. Are we doing a post show? Simon looks so verklempt. We'll decide that in a minute. Uh, well, I just want to listen. Though, if we do a post show, I've got fire. You've got fire. Okay. So there. If you're, so there. Well, that'll be the plug. You wait, wait till I plug the Patreon. That's when you do the I've got fire thing, right? My bad. It's okay. You jump the gun. It happens to everyone. Um, we have a YouTube. There isn't going to be a YouTube for the next three weeks because just technically speaking, this is a nightmare to work out for me and I don't care to. Uh, but we do have a YouTube. It's youtube.com slash JRE podcast. Go and hit that subscribe button right now. Uh, you don't have to do anything other than that. And, of course, the Patreon, if you want to support the show. Uh, it's patreon.com slash J-R-E-E podcast. Uh, you can support the show for as little as $5 a month, and it will help us out a great deal. Now tell them we got fire, Kamar. Well, I've got the fire. We're going to be talking about Mr. B. We're talking about Wayne Gretzky. And uh, we're going to talk about Joe Rogan shooting a deer and not killing it on the first shot. Oh, God. Um, okay, well, that was, uh, that was an episode. Please forgive us. Like I said, we are locked down, so the next uh, couple episodes, unfortunately, are probably going to have to be like this. Um, that's it. What is, what's the date? January 23rd? Is that when it's over, Simon? Oh, yeah. Happy New Year! Good <laughs> listeners. I should know, but I don't. Okay. Well, either way, thank you so much for...